Today on Six Sister Stuff, I'm sharing my five ingredient instant pot recipes. Now before we jump into any recipes, I'm curious how many of you have an instant pot? All right, second question for you. If you have an instant pot, do you use it? Is it just sitting on your shelf or is it still in the box? Now if it is, that's totally fine. I just wanted to share something with you that might be either a good gift for you or a good gift for one of your friends. As sisters, one of our most common questions is, how do you use the Instant Pot? So we thought we'd put it together in a course for you guys. Now this course is only $37 and we take you through from opening the box to literally making basic recipes, even to making easy dinner ideas. So if you need a little help with your Instant Pot or if you know someone who is still in a box or they've never even touched it, this is the perfect gift. So $37, I'll put the link down below in the description or you can go to instantcookingcourse.com. All right, if you guys are ready, let's just jump into the recipes. The first recipe I'm making for you is called cream cheese pasta. All right, for the five ingredients that you need, you'll need some penne pasta, some Parmesan cheese, cream cheese, all eight ounces, some butter, and then we're not counting spices as an ingredient, but you'll need a little bit of salt and pepper and garlic powder. So when making pasta in your Instant Pot, you want to put all the pasta on the bottom of the pot. Now here's the important part. You wanna fill up enough water that it covers every single piece of pasta. So I like to get my finger and just like, Go in there, make sure everything is covered because you don't want crunchy pasta, no one likes that. Now it's time, go ahead and put the lid on. This one has a little knob, so we're gonna make sure we're on sealing. Then pressure cook. Now, it will always go to the time you were at last, so we have two hours to go down. So we're actually just gonna go down to four minutes. All right, once it hits four, you can just walk away. All right, the timer is off. We let all the pressure out because you don't want your noodles to sit very long. And we're gonna go ahead and open it up. There we go. Nice, mix those noodles around a little bit. Now, if you did the water just to the top of the noodles, you shouldn't have a ton of water left over, but if you do have water left over, go ahead and just drain that. Now for the rest of the stuff. So we're gonna add about a fourth teaspoon of garlic powder, two teaspoons of butter, I'll just plop in there, eight ounces of cream cheese. Now usually I cut this up, but it's pretty melted, so we're just gonna just throw it right into it. And then we're just gonna mix these all together till the cream cheese and butter are melted. Once the cream cheese and butter are pretty much melted, we're gonna go ahead and add a fourth cup of Parmesan and just kind of mix that in there too. You can add more if you want to, but it calls for about a fourth. So I kind of cheated. My husband loves chicken on his pasta, so you can have it without chicken, or I just bought this easy chicken fajitas that's already cooked. And all you have to do is heat it up and then put it onto your pasta. And then you have chicken pasta, chicken creamy pasta. All right, Sarah's gonna try the creamy pasta. Mm. What do you think? I will give it a 1,000. A 1,000, that sounds great. <laughs> now the next recipe I'm making is called open-faced beef sandwiches. This might be my husband's new favorite. Okay, so for this recipe, obviously you need a roast, but then you need some beef broth, some Worcestershire sauce, some seasoning, so we have garlic powder, onion powder, and then some salt and pepper. Two packets of brown gravy, and then I like to use sourdough for my base, so you just want a big slice of bread for the bottom. All right, so my roast is kind of huge, so I actually just put it in in here without showing you. It's totally frozen. So you're supposed to season your roast. If it's frozen, it doesn't season very well. So I'm just gonna add the seasoning into the bottom of the pot. So we're just gonna, it's kind of these seasonings are to taste. So I'll do about a teaspoon of each one. So we have about a teaspoon of salt, about a teaspoon or so of pepper, and I'm trying to get it on the roast. We'll see how this goes. About a teaspoon of some garlic powder, and about a teaspoon of onion powder. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is just add about a cup and a half of beef broth into a little extra bowl or something because we want to mix these all together before we put it in our roast. So then we're gonna add both packets of our brown gravy and then one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire sauce, whatever you call it, that's what it is. One tablespoon of that. And we're gonna mix this all together. Now, if you seasoned your roast, which I'm kind of seasoned, you wanna put your gravy 
on the side. You don't want to cover it, cover up your roast because we want to leave those seasonings or as much as we can on the roast. Now I forgot to mention this is a rump roast with a bone in, but really any type of beef roast will work for cooking it low and slow. I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on. Now if you have a little knob that goes from sealing to venting, make sure it's on sealing. Now this Instant Pot's a little bit different. My pressure cook's over here. And so we're actually gonna go for about an hour and 30 minutes. You know, I could even go higher if I wanted to, just because we want it to just sit in here for as long as we can. Now at this one, I actually have to push start and we are good to go. All right, many hours later, I actually let it sit in here for about five more hours once the timer went off. And then I actually already opened it up and shredded all the beef. So we are ready to go. Okay, so I have our sourdough ready to go. I like to have a little bit of vegetables and I wanted some mashed potatoes with it. So we're just gonna go ahead, take out the meat and just put it right onto the sourdough. Now, you can easily make some beef gravy out of this. Just add a little bit of cornstarch and water, but I am out of time. So I'm actually just gonna take this and just put it right onto my bread. The bread might be a little bit soggy, but that's okay. And then I'm also going to add some of this broth onto my potatoes. All right, Maylee is the taste tester. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you could rank it, what would you rank it? Um, like a four. A four? Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. Hi, Sarah. Hi. The next five ingredient recipe I'm making is baked potatoes. All right, so you're gonna start with some russet potatoes. Now, I've scrubbed these really good because you don't want any dirt on your potatoes because that's just plain gross. So you're gonna take the potatoes and just stab it, I don't know, five or six times with the fork just so they don't explode. Then you're just gonna put them right into the bottom of your Instant Pot. Then you're just gonna take one cup of water, dump it in. Now it doesn't matter how many potatoes you have. You could have one potato, you could have eight potatoes. It doesn't matter. You're gonna cook it for the same amount of time. So we're gonna go ahead and put the lid on. Now if you have a little knob that goes from sealing to venting, make sure it's on sealing. This one, I don't have one, so I can just let it be. Then you're gonna go ahead and push pressure cook, go down to 12 minutes and then you can just walk away. All right, the potatoes are all done cooking. Now you want to let them sit there for about 15 to 30 extra minutes just to make sure they're cooked all the way inside. So we're gonna go ahead and lift open the lid now. Okay, potatoes are all done, all cooked. We're just gonna pull one out here. Okay, then with my baked potatoes, I like to just cut them in half for my kids. Nice, and you can either serve a half or the whole. And then I like to take it and just scrape the middles out just a little bit, just to make it a little bit easier for them. If you don't have kids, obviously, <laughs> you don't need to scrape it. Okay, my kids love this milk because they love potatoes, so we do a little sour cream on top. And of course we need some cheese, cheddar cheese. Now my kids love like the bacon crumbles. And then I love just a little bit of green onions. And that's it, just five ingredients, dinner is done. All right, and let's try in the baked potato. Mm, I really like the baked potatoes. Wanna give it a number? Five out of five. Five out of five. All right guys, hopefully this video was helpful for you. Now don't forget, if you want to try our instant cooking course, $37, the link is down below for you in the description. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.